Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Po, and today I'd like to recommend a few books to you guys. Um, in particular, today I'd like to talk about five different feminist leaning books that I have really enjoyed reading and would like other people to read as well. I've tried to think about different types of feminist reads. Feminism isn't exactly a restricted genre, so I've chosen a couple books in very different genres because I think it's interesting to see how you can convey feminist ideas through many different mediums. So let's go ahead and get started. The first book that I'd like to recommend is Women in Science by Rachel Ignatowski. This is actually a children's book. It's an illustrated book with many different one-page bios about women who have impacted science. I think that not only is the art in this incredibly beautiful, I mean really truly spectacular art, but it covers a, a really nice range of women from history, from modern day, who are involved in the sciences in different ways. So from biochemists to astrophysicists to mathematicians. Um, it has some women that we know well that are famous like Marie Curie or Grace Hopper, but it also covers people I've never heard of before, like Mary Anning, who was a paleontologist in the 1800s. I thought that was very cool. She collected bones along the seaside. So lots of really interesting stories and they're great for adults as well as for kids. Lots of short, good descriptions of their lives and how they impacted science. The next book that I'd like to recommend is a satire. It's called From Frazzled to Fabulous by The Man Who Has It All. And this book was so bitingly funny. I laughed a lot and then almost cried a little bit from how true some of it was. The premise is that the author is a man who has it all. Uh, and he has all of those societal expectations that we put on women. He's flipped it so that those are all on men. And he is the man who has it all, who has the career and the family and everything that women are supposed to have. And it makes it really obvious how absurd some of these societal expectations that are put on women are simply by putting it on the other shoe, putting it on men. And it is very absurd. So he talks about advice such as, oh, you should smile more. It'll make you more approachable. Or, you know, you need to find me time such as cleaning the house. Really ridiculous things. So ridiculous, in fact, that I wanted to give you a couple of examples. So I'll read these out. The first quote that I wanted to read you is from a section on staying hydrated, where there's a tip. Wife down at the pub, Now's a good time to check your hydration levels. Being even slightly dehydrated can make you intolerant and uptight. There's another one, which is a quote from a real life dad, Mark 45, which says, I struggled to combine raising children with having a high powered job. I found that eating just six almonds a day gave me the energy I needed to tackle both. So as you can see, it's pretty ridiculous. What I really liked about this book is just how much it makes you realize that societal expectation placed on women are often very ridiculous and we should notice how ridiculous they are and not just accept them as normal. The next book I'd like to recommend is the book Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. This is a fairy tale fantasy novel focusing on some frost uh, fairies and fire demons and magic. And I thought what was so great about this novel was how even though it's focusing on this fantasy fairy tale storyline, it is extremely feminist in a lot of its themes and its views. It focuses on a few different women, a, um, a Jewish moneylender's daughter, a Duke's daughter, and a poor farmer's daughter, and takes a look at what their lives are like what they are expected to do with their lives and what they themselves want out of their futures and how they can take control of their destinies. It focuses on 
a lot of themes like obligation to your family, obligations to society or to your country. How do you make those choices? How do you balance the needs of others with your own personal uh, desire to become the you you want to be? It's a really deep book. It also addresses issues of classism and poverty and anti-Semitism, uh, as well as just things like cultural misunderstandings or um, relationships between husbands and wives. It's really a, an amazing book that has a lot of deeper themes. The only caveat I would add is that some people have found the first person narration style a little confusing because it switches between who is narrating. So it's all done in first person, but sometimes it's the Jewish moneylender's daughter, sometimes it's the farmer's daughter, sometimes it's the Duke's daughter. So if that sort of thing bothers you, it, you may maybe prefer to listen to it on audiobook, so it's a little bit more obvious. The next book I'd like to recommend is more of a self-help advice type book. It's called Ask For It by Linda Babcock and Sarah LeChevre. What I thought was so interesting about this book was even though I think I'm very straightforward and fine with voicing my opinions and my desires, even I found it kind of inspiring and made me think that, hey, I, I should actually speak up a little bit more, even more than I do, um, because it addressed the idea that women often don't negotiate for things in the same way that men do because they have a different expectation of what level of competence or what level in their profession they need to be in order to ask for something. So that idea that men apply for jobs when they're 60% qualified, whereas women only apply when they're 100% qualified. So this book delves into really why you should negotiate things like people aren't gonna just give you raises or give you um, accommodations or uh, make changes to your career unless you let them know what you want. You have to advocate for yourself. And even though it can seem daunting, to ask for things that you feel are maybe way beyond what you should be asking for. The idea is that you feel you shouldn't ask for that, that it's beyond what you should be asking, partially because of the societal expectations of women being more modest, more humble, and, and more perfect in a sense, that you have to be perfect at everything. So I thought this book, while maybe not perfect itself in all ways, was very, inspiring and insightful. So I, I would recommend it to anyone who finds that they're not making as much progress in their career as they would like, or even that they just uh, are struggling to speak up for themselves for what they want. And the last book that I would like to recommend, I have mentioned before, it is Delusions of Gender by Cordelia Fine. I think this is an incredibly researched, well-argued book that talks about how many of the arguments that are based in neuroscience or genetics for why men and women are different are kind of based on faulty science. So it takes a look at how women still do experience sexism in society. There is still a glass ceiling. Women still are expected to do more housework, take care of children, etc. So it is still a problem. And then it takes a look at what the science says. And it points out that, you know, in the 1800s, women were considered inferior because, oh, their skull volume. It's just not as big as men. So clearly, you know, they don't have the same mental capacity or um, in the early 1900s, well, you know, women can't vote because that'll be really awful and they might go insane. So things that we know now is complete bunk then was seen as true science. So the author, Cordelia Fine, makes the argument that many of the things we hear now about neuroscience um, and biological differences between men and women is similarly kind of made up. It's, it's based on um, inaccurate research or based on assumptions that you, you can't actually isolate the effects of certain things like testosterone in, in utero and claim that for sure that is what causes genetic differences. And in fact, you'll see a lot of 
um, those genetic differences in people who show more feminine or more masculine traits and that actually um, socialization and society's expectations on on both women and men is what causes many of those differences. She also, in her third part of the book, talks about how we perpetuate those gender stereotypes. Even when we're really trying not to, we perpetuate them because many of these beliefs are very subconscious and they're expressed in things like, um, for parents, maybe the kids notice that the moms tend to take on more of the housework. You know, that's not something that's explicitly said, but it is modeled. Or things like who is the person who's in charge of um, taking the kids to school or meeting with their teachers or helping them with their homework. These sorts of things can influence the way that children are socialized, even when it's not intentional. So she makes a very strong argument for why we should recognize that sexism is still a problem, not buy into a lot of the neuroscience mumbo jumbo that is being spread around trying to justify that kind of sexism, and how we need to really pay very careful attention how we raise the next generation, because even when we're trying very hard not to um, create this gendered version of our world because it exists and we live in it, we model that for our kids. So I thought that was an excellent read. I hope that these recommendations have been useful for you guys. Maybe one of them you'll pick up and try, or maybe you've already tried some of them, or maybe you have other recommendations for me. I'm trying to read much more feminist literature, so if you've read anything that you would recommend, please do go ahead and put it in the comments below. I would love to read those. Thank you.